there are four types of constraints uh, that we use in Inventor, and we've already used three of them. The first one, the simplest one, being a numeric constraint or dimension. I place a dimension on the line, that number forces the line to be a certain size. Second one we used was geometric constraints. So that would be, I want these two lines to be perpendicular to each other, or I want these lines to be parallel. Those are geometric constraints. We've used assembly constraints, right, like mate and insert, which is forcing the relationship between certain parts to hold together based on whichever one of those constraints you've selected. And the fourth one, the one that we're going to cover today, is called parametric constraints. And parametric constraints relate to how I would dimension or build a part using functions rather than the number, where there's a relationship between, let's say, one dimension and other based on a function that we are going to create. Let's look at an example of why that might be useful. Let's say that I'm going to build like a, a patio chair or Adirondack chair. Okay. As the manufacturer, I've made this to be specifically for an adult. So all the dimensions for this are an adult size. But I'd like to build a child size as well. And I want to base that on, let's say, the height of the chair. Right? The difference between the adult chair and the child chair is how tall the seat is. So if I make functions to design this part, and it's all based on the height of the chair, if I change what the height is, all, everything else will change parametrically. Let's do a simple example in Inventor first. Let's build a really basic puzzle cube piece. And I'll use functions instead of dimensions for this. I'll rough out the basic shape first. Let's say this is like an L-shaped piece. And it's going to be like three cubes tall and maybe two wide. No dimensions, kind of just roughed out the shape. I'll place my first dimension. Notice that this is D0 the starting point of my dimensions. I'm going to set this one to 0 0.75 because these are going to be 3 quarter inch cubes. Now that the rest of the dimensions are going to be based on this 0.75, it's going to be a relationship back to the 0.75. So let's say that this width here, D1, is going to be equal to D0 times 2. Right? So I haven't placed numbers in it, it's more of a function of the original one. And I can do the same thing for the height. My height is going to be D0 times 3. It's going to be 3 cubes tall. I can set this to be equal to D0 because I want that to be the same size. And then I can finish my sketch. When I do an extrusion, it's the same thing. Instead of placing a number, I can place a, a variable like D0. So I'm going to extrude this object. Instead of going 1 inch, I'm going to do D0. And I can check all the formulas that I've created. If I go to the Manage tab and go to uh, Parameters, it says, OK, you set D0 to 0.75. These are all the functions you've created. Okay. Now let's say I ordered the cubes for this project. Everything's already built, and it, they've made a mistake. They sent me 1-inch cubes instead of 3-quarter-inch cubes. Okay. If I go into I Properties with my current design, no matter what material I assign, say it's lead, I get an area of 10.125 and a volume 1.688. That's the original size. But then my pieces are actually 1 by 1 by 1 instead of 3 quarters. So if I go back into here, I can change what the D0 is. So D0 is now 1. And although the shape hasn't changed, which is good, which means all my formulas work because it hasn't uh, corrupted the design, uh, I need to know that the change has taken place by looking at maybe the eye properties, right? Now if I look at the physical properties and I look at material and update, lo and behold, the area has increased, surface area has increased, and so has the volume. Okay, so I know that the change that I made to D0 has affected the area and the volume of that part. So today's activity is uh, about parametrics, and the goal is to build this plate here using functions rather than dimensions. Okay, so we'll have a, a dimension for our first one, D0, will be 3 inches, and everything else will be based on what D0 is. Okay. So let's kind of work through some of those steps. I'm going to create a sketch, and I'm going to use the rectangle tool to place the overall width and 
height of my rectangle. The first dimension that I'm going to place is going to be D0, and I need to follow the way they're labeled here. So the overall height of the object is D0. You need to follow that in order to not get confused about the instructions on the sheet. So this is my D0, and based on the instruction sheet, it says D0 is going to be 3 inches. Then I go back to the sheet. Okay. D1 is going to be 5 thirds ratio overall plate width to overall plate depth. So what that means is my plate width is going to be 5 thirds the plate depth, which is D0. Or I can write that as an equation, D0 times 5 divided by 3. So when I place this dimension for D1, it's going to be D0 times 5 divided by 3. I'm done with this part. I'm going to finish the sketch. I can extrude this out. How far? I go back to the instruction sheet. Okay, the plate thickness, or how far I'm extruded, is 20 times smaller than the overall width. So it's D1 divided by 20. D1 divided by 20. And I get my overall thickness of the plate. Now here's the thing that kind of trips people up. I did D0, D1, D2. D3 is the plate taper angle. Anytime I do an extrusion, it's actually going to use up two functions, like D2 and D3, because if I go back and look at this, on top of doing the extrusion, it also does a taper angle. It's automatically defaulting to zero, which is what we usually use, but it will use up a D. This is D3 right here, so that when I go back to the instruction sheet, now my next one is D4, or if I look at the drawing, D4 is the next option. It's, it's skipped a number, and it's showing those ones that have been skipped here. So I want to add a slot then to this plate. I'll create a sketch on the surface. I'll use the slot tool. And I'm going to just basically rough out the drawing. I'm not worried about the size because I'll use the dimensions to correct that. D4 is going to be the width of this slot. And D4 is equal to D0 divided by 2. And I pulled that right from the instruction sheet. The next thing I want to do is D5, which is going to be the location of this center point to this edge. D5 is equal to 4 fifths the overall plate width, so that would be D1 times 4 divided by 5. And then D6 is going to be the location of this center point from the top of my object. And D6 is D0 divided by 3 or you can say times one-third, same thing. Whoops, I think I put an O instead of a zero. There we go. doesn't like the capital D, so make sure it's a lowercase d for that. Okay. D7 is the radius for this slot. And again, if you look at the instruction sheet, the slot radius is the same as the plate thickness, which is D2. So I'll set that to D2. Finish the sketch. I want to extrude this. This extrusion is going to be a cut this time rather than adding. And D8 is going to be also equal to the plate thickness, which is D2. So I'll put D2 here as well. Last part then would be the little hole. And if I go back here, there's a little hole. I want to do D10, D11, D12 for that hole. Create a sketch, select this surface, draw a circle here. So D10 is going to be the location of this hole to the edge of this plate. D10 is D1 times 1 over 4. D11 is the location from the center to the edge. D11 is D0 times 2 over 3. And then the diameter of the hole is D12. And D12 is twice the slot radius. So that's the slot radius, so I would do 
two times d7, which was the slot radius. Again, I finish the sketch. I do an extrusion. I want to cut in because I'm creating a hole here. And I'll use d2 or the plate thickness again as the distance for the extrusion. OK, so this is built. This looks good. If I go again to Manage and I go to Parameters, I can see all the formulas that I've used. If you look at the instruction sheet underneath all the directions here, it's asking us to record the volume and surface area. So again, if I go to Eye Properties, Application Icon to Eye Properties, Physical, Material doesn't matter because the material won't change the volume or the surface area. And then I can record, okay, here's the surface area, here's the volume. And it's asking us to change the dimension of D0 to 1.5. Okay, so that's going to decrease the size. I go back to parameters. D0 is now going to be 1.5 instead of 3. Everything should update in my formula. The plate is still good. Now I'll go back and check I properties. New area, new volume based on what D0 is. So I want you to build the plate. I want you to answer the questions here, along with the conclusion questions. I would also like to have a screenshot of this piece completely built. So we'll do a print screen, and we can throw this on the Word document. I also would like to have a screenshot of the formulas that you did. So if I go to the Manage tab, and I click on Parameters, these are the formulas that I used to build this. And if I would like to do a screenshot of just this piece, if I hold down the Alt key first, then hit Print Screen, it only takes a picture of what's in the foreground. And then I can paste that into my Word document as well. Save this Word document and submit that to receive credit for this on the LMS.